Hi everyone, Lee Veris here, bringing you Photoshop techniques for teachers and students. Today's Photoshop rant is going to examine an old school technique for lightening shadows as an alternative to using the shadow slider in Lightroom or Camera Raw. Sometimes, just because of the way the, sh the shadow slider works to increase local contrast in the shadows, you can get kind of a crunchy look or maybe too much noise. So the technique, the main technique that I'm going to show here uh, will mitigate that effect. And although it may not always be the best way to lighten shadows, it can be very effective. I'll show you a, a way to determine just how dark shadow areas will print. And that way you can make a more informed decision about how much shadow lightening you need to do. I'll be covering a number of techniques in this rant. We'll uh, see how to read the info panel numbers to evaluate dark tones. I'll show how to use a step wedge to test dark tones in the print, and how to determine the value that will print as black. Uh, we'll see a simple curve to lift dark tones, and I'll show you how to use a threshold adjustment layer to reintroduce black values and blend two different threshold adjustments to fine tune the effect. Finally, I'll show how to use a temporary curve to pre-visualize the print darkness. We're going to work with a photo that my wife, Bobby Lane, and I recently did for an album cover for Mark T. Small, a fabulous roots blues acoustic guitarist. Okay, so here's our shot of Mark and uh, uh, what's happening here <laughs> actually in this, uh, in this image. I'm lying down on the floor holding the guitar up while he spins around and reaches for it. And um, so we had a lot of fun with this and uh, Mark was a great sport. He, uh, he went with all the ideas we proposed. And uh, so what I'm trying to do now is, is get this ready, prepped for print. Uh, we were going for a black and white look um, to, it, it, to get this sort of a little bit more of an antique feel. And uh, you notice why he's dressed in this, this kind of almost old fashioned outfit. Uh, because he is a roots blues guitarist after all. So, um, okay, so I'm in, in looking at this image, it, it seems like everything's fine, right? But I know that we're going to have some issues when we go to print because this area in his clothing is it's all very dark. Uh, we have good, you know, it, it appears to be very good contrast and lighting and everything, but I'd like to get more shadow detail. And this is already uh, processed a bit uh, in, in the raw uh, processor to get this much uh, shadow detail. So his clothing was, was really black, 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 and uh, we were using fairly contrasty lighting on him. You can see the shadows on his face are going really dark here. And uh, so that didn't do us any favors with this dark uh, black clothing. And for print, I'm going to have to open that up quite a bit. Now let me, let me show you what I mean here. Um, I've got, um, here, let's take this off. So this is a, a step wedge, and I like, to, I like to do these sorts of things to test out a printer and paper combination just to see where I, where I have shadow detail and where I don't. So what I've got here is a step wedge that progresses uh, in 10% increments from black to white. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, change the readout here from CMYK. I'm just going to click on that little eyedropper tool and select LAB. And the thing about LAB is that it's going to show me, you know, uh, the brightnesses in the L channel. So here's 0%. Uh, that's 10% brightness, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, so that's middle gray there. Uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100%. You can kind of see all that happening up there in the L value. Um, now, going back over here, uh, if we look at the L values, we can kind of see, you know, this is now at, at the sort of just below 10% in this area. Uh, again, you can kind of look over here and see that's the 10%. It looks fairly light compared to absolute black. Um, and 
by the measurements, you can see that says 9. That's really close to 10. So we would assume that that's pretty close to 10. Uh, however, look over here on this arm. If I move across the cuff here, there's our 10%. It's just barely visible there. And as we move across into the shadow areas, it, it gets down and down and down and down. And you can see the RGB numbers, 11, 12, 8, 5, 4. These are, you know, you don't really get uh, close to 10% until you're at, in this case here, you can see a level 27. That's 10% brightness. So anyway, I've constructed this thing with very specific values here to give me a, an even linear step wedge from black to white. And then down in this area, let me zoom in here just a little. Down in this area, what I did uh, is right here's zero, RGB zero, zero, zero. The next one over is five, five, five. You can kind of see I put a little tick mark there. You might be able to see this on the video, you might not. Um, this is 10, this is 15, and that's 20. Now the reason I'm doing this is that when I print this, I can see where I start to lose differentiation. Uh, and most of the time I find that at around 15, that's about the maximum level of bat black. So all of these areas will look the same darkness as this zero black will look. Uh, but you have to make a, a print to test it. And then on, on the other side, uh, approaching white, you know, th this is 255, right? And there's 250, 245, and 240. So when we print this out, uh, something very interesting happens. Um, so when I print it, it actually starts to look like this. I've just put a, made a curve that on screen matches what I see in the print. And now you can kind of see, if you zoom in here, uh, on this particular printer, uh, I, sure enough, I was really pretty much getting, I only get separation between the level of 15 and 20, right? So uh, all of these tones sort of collapse down and look as black as the blackest black that the printer can make. Uh, so what I, what I can do once you, you make a curve like this, which mimics how it looks when it prints, if I take that curve, and I'll use the Move tool here, and I'm going to just drag out of this document up to the tab for our uh, for Mark here, and drag down and let go of my mouse. And now you can see that's the same curve that I made to make the step wedge look like the print. right? And now you can really see how much darker everything looks including the background. Everything's starting, starting to plug up. And I need way more uh, shadow detail than that because this is just going to look ugly in the print. Okay, so that's that's my, uh, my goal here. So um, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start by uh, making a curve. <laughs> I'm going to make a curve that opens this up. Now I'm going to open this up a little sort of artificially. I'm just going to take the, the end point here and I'm just going to start brightening up the image. And uh, if I go take the black to say, I'm going to make it go right to 20. So now the blackest thing in fact, I'm going to make it go up a little higher, and I'm, I'm just going to use the arrow keys now. It's, now it's at 20. Let's, let's put it all the way up to 27, which is our 10%. Uh, so the darkest things now here will be that 10% brightness, which is like a, a zone 1, for those of you that might be familiar with the Ansel Adams zone system. Um, and now I'm going to figure out a way to put the black point back. Okay, so this is the, this is the, the main trick in this tutorial. Uh, we're going to use a threshold adjustment. So I'm going to put a threshold adjustment on, and uh, the threshold adjustment works by turning the image into just black and white, and the break point is where the slider is. So right now it's at the 50% mark. Uh, or actually 128, it's not exactly 50% brightness, but uh, it's right in the middle, 
of our RGB numbers. So if I move it to the left, I will show more and more of the image will turn white until we get right down to the very darkest things. And I can go right down there. Remember I was at uh, 27, a level 27 to get, you know, so something like this. I can, I can tell that I'm going to get a, a good black, a crisp black right there. Okay, and, and um, so we're going we're gonna to hold that there. And you notice it's just, I'm really just sort of identifying the darkest areas. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a merged version of this and it will show up on top. So what you do is you hold down the Alt or the Option key, and you go over to your Layer, uh, layer Options Flyaway here, and I'm going to select uh, Merge Visible. But you have to hold down the Option or Alt key, and that will make a new layer at the top. And it's, it's interesting how this layer always comes in a little smoother, a little more detailed looking than uh, the underlying uh, layer. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've got I've got some nice like really dark areas uh, in in the clothing here, and you can kind of see a sense of a little bit of texture kind of looking like uh, the guitar sound hole looks a little weak here. So I'm going to make another um, threshold adjustment. So I'll just go back to my threshold adjustment and double click this. Come in here, and we're gonna now I'm looking for this area. Okay, so now I've got some nice uh, black showing up in the sound hole of the guitar. Uh, possibly some other areas here. Uh, let me move this aside here. Maybe getting a little bit nicer blacks in here. Um, little reflections on the side of the guitar showing up nice and black there. Uh, so now I'm going to merge this. Um, again, we'll go over to our layer options flyaway, hold down the Alt or Option and select Merge Visible, and I get another merge layer. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I want to combine. I don't want quite as much black. I want the articles of clothing to be more like this, and then I want the guitar to be like that. Uh, so um, I'm going to start by masking this layer off. You'll see where I'm going in a minute. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, click on the layer mask icon to make a black layer mask. And what I want to do now is paint with white into the mask over the areas that I want to get darker. So I want the sound of the guitar to get darker. So I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, you know, maybe we can add a little bit into the, um, the pick guard there, maybe on the side of the guitar here. Uh, maybe uh, a little bit up in here. Um, some of these other areas will add just a little bit of black back into it. Okay, maybe into this area here just to make sure to crisp that black area up. So I'm kind of playing around with uh, shadow detail. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of putting the blacks back in. And what I'm going to do is merge these two layers. So I'm going to take this layer now that I've added. I've added a few more areas of, of black. And I'm going to merge this down. So I go to my layer up and fly away here and merge down. Okay. And now this layer I'm going to put in multiply mode. Let's take the threshold, turn the threshold adjustment off. And now that's in multiply mode. And you kind of see what I've done now is, is at, I've lightened up the dark blacks, but put some a black point back in. Okay, so if we look at the original, again, I'm going to uh, solo this layer by just clicking on that little eye icon. That's the original, and this is the new version. Um, if I didn't have this, this threshold, uh, Threshold, blacks, call that. Uh, and I, I wish I could, I could spell better than I can type, but there we go. Um, 
so that is just putting the black point back in. Without that, everything is, you know, it, 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 everything is, is much lighter. It goes to 27, the darkest thing in here. Now I put the black point back in, and uh, we've also kind of opened up the side of his face. But it doesn't look now, uh, it doesn't look bad. Um, it actually seems like it adds more shadow detail. Okay. So what now? What I said. I, this is all. All of this has lightened the background. Let me toggle this on and off. And I want to put that. I want to get that kind of vignetting effect um, around uh, the figure, like make it look a bit darker, like it was uh, in the original, right? In the, the background, anyway. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by making an elliptical uh, marquee, and I want to draw it like from the center. So. What we're going to do here is hold down the Alt or Option key and start making my ellipse. And I guess pretty pretty well, okay. You know, I may have to kind of move it to center it a little bit better. There we go. Um, now let's check that out. Let's see what that that looks like. I'm going to go to my uh, uh, quick mask. If you hit the Q now, what I've done here with a quick mask, if we go to the channels panel, um, we can now see mask, quick mask options. So because I've turned it on, the quick mask is like an extra alpha channel, and now we can see quick mask options. By default, this is, uh, you usually see this as a red color by default. So I'm turning it into black here. If you just click on that little square, You'll get the color picture. I'm I'm making it black, and I'm making the 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 opacity 90% because I I want to. You'll you'll see in a minute, in a second here, <laughs> why I'm doing this. But I want to totally visualize that that mask, so that I can come up here to the filter menu, and I'm going to do a Gaussian blur. Okay, so my Gaussian blur. I'm uh, going to give it a, a good hefty blur here. I'm looking at what I want to do is just kind of simulate the, the vignette effect. And I want to see the, the softness of that. Okay, so I've got, that's, that's kind of how soft I want that transition to be. So I say, okay, and now if, when we go out of um, quick mask mode, that marquee is still there. That represents the 50% point where the transition is happening smoothly across that that uh, that transition. And I'm going to invert the selection. Inverse, select, inverse. So now we're actually selecting the outside, not inside. And now that I've got that selection in place, I'm going to click on the curves. And I can now make my outside dark, darken to suit. I just want to take it a certain amount. Maybe I'll maybe add a little more contrast there. Something like that. Now you know you can do something similar in uh, in Lightroom. Uh, I find that you have a little bit more control over the shape of the um, vignette this way. Uh, but there's my vignette, and now I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, and I can throw away my sh threshold adjustment layer. And uh, we're good to go. Actually, there there is one more thing we need to do. Um, uh, let me fit this on the screen here. Um, you remember how we added this uh, this threshold black layer to put the black back? And now we have to do a final curve to actually put the black point where it will print, uh, meaning uh, that 15, 15, 15, which was the darkest tone that will print. So what I'll do is I'm going to take uh, the uh, uh, the fixed sampler tool here, the color sampler, and I know that down here in this uh, 
in the um, in the sound hole, we have a point. So that's that's at one. Okay, so we know that uh, we don't need that point to be any lower than fifteen uh, to print at the the maximum black. So uh, now I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, put another curve on, final curve, that will uh, set this point to, to 15. So final curve on top, get that end point, select it. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys and nudge this point up, and just all the while looking at these numbers. And uh, we can see we can put it up to 15. Now, when you look at this, it looks like it's a lot flatter, but it actually will print darker. And to, to see just how dark it will print, let's get our, our curve again uh, from our step wedge. And I'm just going to drag it up to that tab and drag it down and drop it on top of everything. So now you can see uh, that sort of approximates what it will end up looking like. and. Um, you can kind of see that that is a bit different than what we had when we started off where everything was all plugged up in here and now that we put all those uh, adjustments on top we're back to something that's going to print like this okay so um, keep that in mind uh, and uh, let's uh, let's look at a review so we saw how to use info panel numbers and a step wedge to identify the highest value that will print as the darkest black. We then used a simple curve to elevate the black point well above the darkest printable black. Then we used two threshold adjustment layers blended together to reintroduce a black point. We saw how to use an elliptical selection and a curve to create a vignetting effect with quick mask mode to visualize mask edge softness. We used a temporary curve to evaluate our shadow lightning efforts. And finally, we used a curve to set a print appropriate black point. To get the step wedge used in this ramp, look for the link in the description of the video below. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. If you have any questions or you'd like to see more detail about any of the techniques I touched on in this project, please let me know in the comments can always find more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and ring the bell. You might consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print, available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions. Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at veris.com. Look under the Education menu for online courses and pick from over 12 courses covering all aspects of post-production, workflow, retouching, and special effects. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop round.